Which small aluminum boat is a better choice? Is a 12-foot aluminum boat actually a better choice than a 14-foot aluminum boat? The answer might surprise you because it isn't just as easy as buy the biggest boat you can afford. It's more like trying to decide between a ribeye steak and a tenderloin steak. Both can be great for different reasons. And for my metric friends, we're talking about 3.6 meter boats versus 4.3 meter boats. And apparently we still use feet due to a falling out with France about 150 years ago. Unfortunately, one of the problems with small boats like this is we can't usually take them out for a test drive. A lot of times we're buying them in somebody's yard, or if you're buying brand new, you don't get to take those boats out and try them out. So the only knowledge we have might be other boats we've been on or from watching videos, like this one you're watching right now. But whether you're buying a new boat or used boat, let's look at some of the reasons why buying one of these boats might be better for you than the other. Because there might be some things you should take into consideration that you haven't thought about. I made some mistakes on my journey to buy the right boat. It took me three boats over a few years to find the right boat that was best for me. And I want to help you so that maybe you can get it right the first time. Because for some of you, this might be your first boat ever. So let's take a look at what really makes them different besides one being 12 feet and one being 14 feet. And then later on in this video, I'll cover a couple of things that might not be so obvious that could help make your decision. Let's take a look at a few boats. Here is the Lund WC-14. This 14-foot V-hold aluminum boat looks amazing. And here, it's slightly smaller brother, the Lund WC-12, which is a good-looking boat as well, and only slightly smaller. Both of these boats look like a nicer layout than either of my two boats. And of course, these are brand new boats, so they are much more money than my little old boat cost. Looking at the specs from the Lund website, the WC-12 has a 61-inch beam, can be used with a maximum of a 15-horsepower outboard, weighs 205 pounds, can hold three people, and costs $5,009 brand new. The two-foot larger WC-14 has a 69-inch beam and can run a bigger 25-horsepower motor, weighs 80 pounds more, coming in at 285 pounds, but it can seat four people and costs over $1,000 more than the 12-foot boat. Looking at them side by side, it doesn't really look that much bigger at all, but you kind of get a lot more boat but you also spend a lot more money for the 14-foot boat. Many new 14-foot boats cost between $1,000 and $1,500 more than similar 12-foot boats. And for many of us, cost can be a very big factor when we're shopping for a brand new boat. But when we're buying used, especially really old boats like mine, sometimes the cost difference between a 12 and 14-foot boat is negligible, which is why we'll dive a little bit deeper into the pros and cons of these two boat sizes. Looking at the weight of the boat, if lighter weight is important to you to be able to take a boat on and off the trailer or launch the boat from the shore without a trailer, a 12-foot boat is probably going to be lighter than a 14-foot boat. If you're always going to be storing your boat on a dedicated trailer, and launching and retrieving your boat from that trailer, the weight of the boat in that situation is not really a consideration because we're literally talking between 75 and 175 pounds difference. So it doesn't really matter unless you're trying to do something like actually flip a boat over by hand completely by yourself. I can handle moving this 12-foot boat around by myself on or off the trailer. I can drag it around the yard quite easily. This 14-foot boat is a little too heavy for me. I mean, I can kind of drag it around a little bit, but it's not pretty. Which brings me to portability. Because it is smaller and lighter, a 12-foot boat might fit in the bed of your pickup truck or even on the top of your vehicle. 
while a 14 foot boat is likely too big and would need a trailer. In addition, I can lean my 12 foot boat up against my shed or carry my 12 foot boat all by myself. All things that I cannot do by myself with my 14 foot boat. So a smaller boat is more portable than a bigger boat. Then we look at the capacity of each boat and this is where the 14 foot boat really excels. Here we have the low 1240 John boat. It's small and very lightweight, but it can only carry two people and it has a maximum capacity of 535 pounds. That means if you and your friend each weigh exactly 200 pounds and you stick a brand new four stroke 9.9 .9 horsepower outboard on the back of that that weighs 96 pounds, 40 pounds of gear is all you could bring on the boat. Or if you and your buddy actually each weigh about 250 pounds, you don't even have the capacity for a motor. That low 1240 ends up being a one person boat for many people. And if you're always boating by yourself, not an issue. But let's check the capacity of the low 1448M John boat. It's bigger, 150 pounds heavier, $1,500 more money, but it can theoretically carry four people. With a total carrying capacity of 831 pounds, it can easily handle the weight of a 25 horsepower outboard and take two people who weigh over 250 pounds each and all of their gear without overloading this boat at all. And as you can see from this above shot, these two boats don't look all that different, but the top one can carry almost 300 pounds more weight. Every type of boat is a little bit different, but generally speaking, a larger boat makes it a little bit easier to walk around inside of the boat, and they tend to be able to handle rougher waters. Obviously, there's some exceptions to this rule. There are some very stable, very high-sided, smaller boats, and there are some larger boats that really are not good at all in rougher waters. Be sure to consider the weather, water conditions, and other boat traffic for the areas you plan to use your boat. A very small boat on a pond can be awesome, but maybe not so much on a busy river. Earlier, I mentioned the mistakes I made trying to find the right boat for me. And yes, I said it took me three years to find one that works for me. I started out with a 12-foot flat bottom John boat that I got for $250. I was very drawn to the fact that it was very lightweight and very cheap. And I thought this surely would do the job for everything that I need. But that boat was much too small. It was okay in the creek, but it wasn't well suited for the river near me. Shortly thereafter, I bought this 12-foot V-hold boat, which was much better suited for the river, but it was really hard to move around and walk around the boat because of the curved floor, and it's really quite tippy. Being a 12-foot boat, it was still quite easy to move this boat around by myself, but it was not easy to get in and out of. And now I'm sitting in a 14 foot V-hull boat, which is much better suited for my needs than the 12 foot. And I didn't know that without having taken that journey. This boat is a V in the front and it's flatter back here. And even where the floor isn't flat, it's much less of an angle. And because I bought this boat used, this particular one really wasn't any more money than many old 12 foot boats were selling for at the time. On the negative side though, when I got this boat, I was quite surprised at how much heavier it is. I can't just pick it up or flip it over. So that's the compromise, needing a dedicated trailer to have a boat that's better suited for my needs. So if you had the choice between a 12 foot and a 14 foot aluminum boat, which would you go with and why? Let me know in the comments below. Earlier in this video, I mentioned there are some other considerations we might not realize. And one of those is boat registration. In some areas, 12 foot and smaller boats do not require as much registration process as boats larger than 12 feet. 
check with your local area to see because sometimes there are much stricter requirements and or fees for boats larger than 12 feet. Another consideration is motor size and engine cost. Lower horsepower motors used on smaller boats generally cost less than higher horsepower motors. If buying new, a 25 horsepower outboard engine is often $1,000 more than a 9.9 .9 horsepower outboard engine. What this means is that if you're buying everything brand new, you could easily spend well over $10,000 for your 14 foot boat, your brand new 25 horsepower outboard engine, and a trailer, which you will definitely need. Or conversely, you might be able to find an old boat that fits in the bed of your truck with a little old two-stroke outboard and you're on the water for under a thousand dollars. But that's another video, which is right here. Check that one out right now. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe on the water.